is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make a crocheted envelope. And you can use these for Valentine's Day. This is the back here. It's got two buttons. And it's all crocheted, so you're not going to need to go out and get buttons unless you want to. So if you uh, want to make this for Valentine's, you can use these colors. And maybe instead of using a flower, you could put a nice heart on the front. Or for Christmas, you could add a little Christmas tree or a Christmas bulb. And you can make them for a birthday. Maybe find a motif of a, a cake or something to put on the front. Or you can embroider, you know, happy birthday or whatever on the front. Just whatever you decide to use these for. So for this project, you're going to need, you'll be using less than a skein, skein of yarn. I've just got regular worst weight yarn, which is four ply for the US and 10 ply for Australia. And whatever color you, you use to make the main color, uh, you'll use the most of. So just make sure you have a decent uh, enough amount. But if you're gonna make uh, the buttons, it's just gonna take a very little bit for the buttons. You just need to decide what it is uh, you wanna make on the front and decide how much yarn you think you'll need. For this uh, flower here, it doesn't take a whole lot. And you're also going to need the card. This one is supposed to be the standard size, which in inches is 4.375 by 5.625. In centimeters, that's 11.1125 centimeters by 14.28 centimeters. So you can draw it out on a card like this, or if you have the actual card with you to uh, be able to to measure it from. And that's exactly what I did. And you want it to be a little bit over the side so that the card actually fits inside. So get your card. You're also going to need a five millimeter hook, size H hook for the US, a tapestry needle, cause you'll need to sew on your front part and your buttons. And you're also gonna need two stitch markers. And that's it. So grab those items and let's get started. Okay, for this size card and for the tightness that I crochet, it could be different for you. It takes about 23 chains for me to reach one end to the other and to have an extra chain hanging off the side here. It's going to grow in size when you start to add your single crochets. So keep this in mind. You don't wanna make this way too big because then it's gonna get even bigger when you start your single crochets. So make it just about to, to size or just a little bit bigger by at least a chain here and a chain on the other side. It takes me 23 chains. If it takes you a little bit more because you may crochet tighter, then maybe add a little bit more. It's very adjustable. We're just gonna be working with single crochets here so it won't really matter if you need to add or subtract chains. So for me, it took 23 chains. So let me just move this out of the way. Get a little closer here. So once you have your 23 chains, you're going to lose one right away. So also keep that in mind when you start to uh, do your chains. I mean, when you're measuring against your card. So you go in from the second chain from the hook and you're going to do a single crochet and you want a single crochet, and I'm just going in through the top, just through one of the loops in the chain. You wanna do one single crochet in each stitch of your chain. If you're like me and you started your chain with 23, then you should have 22 stitches. So go ahead and single crochet down your chain and I'll see you back here in a moment. Okay, once you've single crocheted down your chain, what you wanna do is now pivot your work because you wanna be working in these bottom stitches now. So I'm just going to pivot my work like this. And in the very last stitch where you put your single crochet, you wanna put another single crochet in that same stitch. Now working in these bottom stitches now, you're going to be putting one single crochet 
and I'm trying to make sure here that going in through the very next stitch and I'm going under both there's two loops left here and I'm going under both when you get done with this row you need to make sure that you count your stitches if you had 22 on the other side then you should have 22 stitches going along this side as well Just keep single crocheting until you get to your beginning stitch of the round. When you think you've hit the very last stitch of your round, count your stitches. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21, 22. Remember this one on the side, it's hard to see. Let me just move this light out of the way. See these two? There's kind of side stitches, one and two. This is the one that's on the, the front side that we first did, and then this is on the bottom side. So make sure you count this stitch as one. So I have 22 stitches. Let me turn this one off. It may be a bit too bright. Okay, maybe I turn this one on, turn this one off. Okay, let's try that. Okay. So, once you have the stitches that you need, what you want to do is now, this is your first stitch of the round. You want to go in to this first stitch. Probably better just a single crochet into this first stitch. And then go ahead and place a marker marking this first stitch of the round because you don't want to lose where you begin. Okay, I'm just going to go right in the corner here. We just need to know that this is where we started. This is the side we start because we're going to be going around and around and around in one continuous round now. Okay, once you've got that side marked, then you just want to continue to do one single crochet in each stitch. So that was round one that we just did. Now we're starting round two. And this is bending because it's folding like that. So you can just go ahead and let it just fold it in like that. Both ends should do that. Should be uh, trying to close up. So like I said, this is round two. And we're going to need a total of, I did 29 rounds total. But it could be different for you. What I want you to do is to go ahead and do the second row all the way around of single crochets and then we're going to measure it measure it against your card so finish this uh, top part and then come back around doing the bottom stitches to get back up to your stitch marker again and then we'll measure it together okay so I completed that row and now I'm going to get my card here you get your card Let me back out just a little bit more. Okay. Now you want to take your card or your drawing, if you have a drawing like me, and you want to lay it over your drawing. You want to make sure that it's sticking over the side, like you see on this side. So if you put the end of your crochet work on the very end of your card, and then just do this, you can see how it's much bigger than the card so if you just move it this way a little bit 
Now you have a little bit on this end and a little bit on this end, which means that card will slip right into the envelope. And that's what you want. You want a few stitches on this side, a few stitches on this side. You don't want it overly big. So mine's about right. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick with my uh, original chain of 23. So I have a total of 22 stitches. And if it's too big or too small, this is the time to make adjustments because it's going to stay about this size for the rest of the, uh, the time you're making it. So once you're, you're ready and you've got this up to this point and you're happy with the size, then just go ahead and continue to single crochet every uh, round and around and around. And like I said, it took me 29 rows, but it may not take you as much. So what we're going to do is we're going to do like maybe 10 more rows and then check it against our card again. So I'm going to do that and then I will see you back here after I've done uh, about 10 more rows. Okay. So I went ahead and did 10 more rows, giving myself 12 rows. And then you want to put it up against your, the lines. Put that up against there. Make sure that the bottom is on the bottom of the paper or your card. And you can see now that I'm not quite at the top. So I'm just going to keep crocheting rows. Last time it took me 29 rows. This time it may take me less. It may take me more. That's why I said this is, this is very adjustable. You may crochet tighter one day than you do another. So for me, it could be more rows than it was last time. Also the yarn can uh, make a difference. So this is why I say use the card and just keep crocheting around and around and around until you reach this line and it's the exact size that you need of your card. And then we'll start to make the flap. Okay. I just finished. Um, I just finished a row and then got to my marker side and I checked it and it looks like from the bottom up to the top that it's good. So for some reason it looks like it's, no, that's okay, it's good. So from this line to here, and you can see it's a little bit over, which is great because in the center you can be able to slip your card into it. This time it only took me 18 rounds. Last time it took me 29. So it does matter the uh, thickness of your yarn and everything and how tight or how loose you crochet. But if, you go, if you're going by your card, then it will tell you how many rows. So now I have my width and my length, and I'm happy. I'm good. So now I'm ready to make my flap. So you want to start by grabbing your marker. So I'm going to take my marker here since I don't need it anymore. And I had 22 stitches, so I want to count out from marker to marker 22 stitches. And you want one of your stitches to be in the last row work, I mean the last stitch worked. So you also want it to be on the sides because you want to have it as even as you can. That way you can put the flap over the side. So this is my most side stitch. You can adjust it later. Just to place a marker on this side. And then I'm going to count over 22 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So I'm going to mark on this side. So you should have your two flaps uh, on the side. Go ahead and look at it, see if it's going to be straight. This one actually needs to be here. This is the 22nd. Okay, looks good. So now, And get a little closer for you. Now we're going to be working back and forth in rows. 
we're now done with the rounds to make our flap. So we're going to be single crocheting from one marker to the other marker, our 22 stitches. Make sure that you count and make sure that you stay with your stitches that you're using. So you're going to chain one and turn and then the same stitch here where your stitch marker is you're going to put a single crochet and that's one. Keep single crocheting down three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, and twenty-two. Eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, twenty-two. Okay, now I got my twenty-two. <clears throat> I'm just gonna back out a second and take a look at it. Make sure that you. It's even on both sides, and you can kind of fold it over just slightly. You can see it looks like it's even, perfect on this side. So I'm going to go with that for two more rows. So because you want three rows of just solid uh, single crochets. So this is one. I'm going to go back and do two, and then one more. You'll just all you have to do is just chain one and turn. So I'm going to single crochet down all these 22 stitches for this row and one more for a total of three rows and then I will see you back here. Okay, just got done with my three rows of single crochets, I hope, yes, three. So I've got my three rows of single crochets done and as you can see now you can fold it over and make sure that it's going to be even on both sides better tell. So now for the next four rows you're going to be doing decreases. So from row 33 to row 36 you're going to be doing one decrease in the beginning and in the end. All the ones in between will be single crochets. So I have 22 stitches so I'm going to single crochet a decrease in the first stitch single crochet 18 and then single crochet decrease and then my next round I'll do the same thing single crochet decrease in the first and last and then in the middle I'll have 16 stitches it's just going to keep reducing by two stitches each round so you want to do it for the next four rounds and then I will see you back here whoops I figured I should probably show people who don't know how to do the decreases so let me get closer real quick. So what you'll do is you'll chain one and turn it. And then you'll be using the first two stitches. You'll go in through one stitch and pull up a loop. And then you'll go into the next stitch and pull up a loop. Now you have two stitches that you're grabbing here. But you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through all three loops. That's a single crochet decrease. And you're going to single crochet all the way until you get to your last two stitches on this side. And then you're going to use those last two stitches to do a single crochet decrease. So I'm just going to single crochet until I get to my last two stitches. And if you're not sure if these are the last two stitches of this round, you can always count. 
Now I'm on the last two stitches here. I'll do the same thing. I'll go through one, pull up a loop, then go through my last stitch and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. Chain one. So that's your first decrease round. You'll need to do three more. So you chain one and you turn. And again, the very first stitch, you'll be decreasing. So you go through one, two, decrease. Single crochet until you get to your last two stitches. And then you'll do another decrease. And then that will be your second row of decreases. Then you'll need to do two more rows. You need to do a total of four decrease rows. And then I'll see you back here. Okay, after you've finished your four rows of decreases, we're going to be making our buttonhole row. So you want to chain one and turn. And this will be the same no matter how many uh, uh, stitches that you have. It's the same with the decreases. You know, you, it's worked in the first and the last, so you can have more stitches here if your envelope is bigger or smaller. So what you need to do is single crochet in the first three. First three stitches. And then you want to chain three. Then you want to skip two. So you're going to go one, two. And then in the third stitch, you'll do a single crochet. And that will give your buttonhole. And I'm going to make a, another one. So I'll show you again. So you began by single crocheting three. So you want to make sure that you have one, two, three stitches on this side that you're going to single crochet. And then after that we skip two, one, two. So we want to make sure that those are open for our chain. So we need to single crochet in the next three stitches. That will give us what we need in order to repeat exactly what we did on this side. So now we have our stitches, one, two, three, for a single crochet and the two that we're going to skip. So we need to chain three, one, two, three, skip our two stitches, one, two, and then the third, do your single crochet, and then single crochet in the next two stitches too. So now we have them even. So you should have three single crochets, three single crochets, your buttonhole, and then how many uh, stitches, whatever that you need in the center. Could be different for you. For me, it's four. So for the next round, or row, sorry, you want to chain one and turn. Now we're going to single crochet down our whole row. The only difference for this one is in the buttonholes here, you want to single crochet two in that uh, chain three space. So I'm going to single crochet the first three stitches. Come up to my chain three space here. I'm just going to go right into that space and put two single crochets. Then I'm going to single crochet over to my next buttonhole. One four and then I'm putting two single crochets in that chain three space. Then my last three single crochets and then that's it. You want to chain one and cut your yarn. And you can remove your stitch markers. And you can get your tapestry needle. And I just like to run it on the inside stitches because this is the part that will be folded in. Just to hide that tail just a bit. Okay. So now you have your, back up a bit, now you have your envelope done and you have your two buttonholes here. Now we need to make our buttons, so choose the other color that you want to use to make your buttons. Grab the same size hook you're using 
and we need to make two buttons. So make your slip knot. And what you want to do is chain three, one, two, and three. You want to go in through your first chain to create a um, hole. And you're only going to chain one. And then your ring here, you're going to work six single crochets. So find your center. Put one, two, three, four, and I'm working over my tail here, five, and six. And it can be difficult to find the first chain, I mean the first single crochet. So what I do is I count backwards, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is my first stitch. So I'm going to slip stitch to end the round using that stitch. Then you want to chain one and leaving yourself enough tail to sew your button on. You'll cut your yarn. Also it's best to thread your tapestry needle and come in from the bottom to the top, somewhere near the center hole, and bring your yarn to the front of the button. Just going to make it so much easier to sew on. And then you can get your, your envelope here, and you can fold it like you would want to have it. You can put your button underneath one of those holes just to center it. Make sure that the hole of the button, you can see through the hole of the envelope. So it should be a hole here and a hole here. Should be going right through so you know it's centered. Then you can just hold the button there, pick up the envelope, and now you want to work going around Get it closer. Oops, goes out of focus if I get too close. So you want to go around just this circle here. You want to leave the outside loose so that it can grab a hold of the buttonhole. So you're only going to be crocheting around the center. I'm trying to stay in frame, but I should back up a bit. I'm going to go near my center. Okay, once you've got all the way around, you can hide your tail. I'm going to make a few knots back here. I just pull the yarn down till I got a loop and then I feed my yarn through that. Go this direction and then I'm going to go the opposite direction. Do the same thing. And then I like to feed my hook, I mean my tapestry needle back through the front near the center hole. And then I'm just going to feed it down some of the front stitches here in the front. Cut my yarn. Then you can test your oops, there we go. Test your buttonhole. There you go, there's one button. Now we need to make our second button and sew it on. Okay, just made my second button. Same thing. Make sure that you thread your tapestry needle towards the center so that your 
yarn is on top find the other buttonhole center it remember center and center you want the center of the button and the center of the hole and then when you like it unbutton this one hold it then you can start sewing using the middle around the middle and then tie your knots as you did before hide your tail I'll see you back here in a moment okay got my second button sewn on so then you just want to try them both out there you go and on this side you can embroider you know happy birthday or happy thanksgiving merry christmas or whatever you want this one i i used a flower because i couldn't find a heart that i really liked so i improvised and used this but if you have a nice motif heart pattern that you want to use then this would be a great uh thanksgiving i mean uh thanksgiving valentine's day uh envelope and for this one i kind of made it with christmas colors and i found this cute little pattern for a christmas tree so you can sew a Christmas tree on the front. And this could be a uh, Christmas tree. I mean, a Christmas uh, card. And you could add like little balls of colors or beads or anything like that. Um, I have a pattern that I found, this motif. It was for a three tier, so it was pretty big. It was gonna go off my card. So I only used the top and the middle. And then when she started to mention the bottom side, that's when I changed my color to brown and did two rows. So if you wanna make this little tree, then you can find the link in the pattern or on the bottom of this uh, video, I'll put it in the description box. And that's it, and if you wanna make a birthday card, maybe you can find a nice pretty motif of a, of a cake or balloons or something, you can put that on the front. Make it whatever color you like. Really, really adjustable. So you can make this in any, uh, any size card that you, you want. It just depends on uh, how you crochet the thickness of the yarn you know if you crochet tightly it doesn't matter like I told you on this one this one took me 29 rows this one took me 18 so it's all in uh, how big uh, your card is just go by the size of your card and then just stop when it's the size that you need and that's it that has been the tutorial to show you how to make a cool crocheted envelope I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did, please don't forget to subscribe and please don't forget to like and share this video. Thanks so much for watching.